Hello once again, everybody. Welcome back to Sonic and the Parallel Worlds. This is a Games Done Quick Hotfix where we are having a look at speedruns of Sonic fan games and original the original games with some slight tweaks, some modifications. We are already on day two. If you missed any of day one, they will be posted on our YouTube or you can, if you fancied it, you can go through our Twitch archive at the moment. But best to watch it on YouTube. Um, just a reminder that if you are watching this on YouTube by chance, um, be sure to press the like button uh, on this video and subscribe to the channel and go to twitch.tv slash games on quick to catch these happening live. The, you can see a whole lot of ha stuff happening in the chat. You can ask questions. Sometimes they might get answered and yeah, just see, see the hype as it's happening. Speaking of hype, we had a little bit of RPG and uh, his friend Colin earlier on in the Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited run. But now he returns again, showing us Sonic Robo Blast 2. Now he did show us this yesterday, but this time it's different once again. RPG, what is in store for us? Well, that's the thing really with Sonic Robo Blast 2. <laughs> you can modify it very heavily in a number of interesting and different ways. This time, I'll be playing through a different mod that aims to recreate the Sonic 06 experience, perhaps as it always should have mm -hmm. been, with no minigames and no loading, as best it can be done in the SRB2 engine. Um, it is using perhaps some slightly more high definition textures than you might expect from SRB2. Um, I think they look mm -hmm. pretty good. I'm going to be doing this run as Amy Rose. No silly modified, modified characters this time, I'm afraid. Oop, delete my old live backup. <laughs> Sorry, Robotnik. <laughs> so, oh, this music. I love this this little joint little bit of piano intro. So, so I'm going to be doing this as Amy Rose. There are quite a few quirks to how Amy works. I'm going to do my best to explain them during Wave Ocean because that's a nice little introductory level. And um, I am ready whenever you are, Hibby. If you'd like to count Fabulous. me in. We, we are ready. Oh, go on then, I get to do it again. <laughs> Alrighty, we are going to go in three, two, one. Amy Rose. So the way Amy works as a vanilla character is pretty different to sort of your Sonic, your Tails, your Knuckles. She has a slower top speed. She has abysmal acceleration and no tools really to do it, apart from <laughs> one little minor quirk I'll explain later. Um, she doesn't roll into a ball when she jumps, meaning she's vulnerable. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not sounding great so far. However, she does have a slightly higher than normal jump height and she can at least swing the hammer in midair. Um, to damage things. And if she uses the hammer on a spring, we can gain additional height and additional speed from doing that. That's not to say, though, that she's completely helpless in the movement department. So it was probably quite difficult to see me doing it at the very beginning. But if you're moving faster than your max speed, as I explained yesterday in the Mamie run, if you jump frame perfect on the ground, you can preserve your momentum. And every frame you're in contact with the ground, it will bleed off. I'm going to aim to do a couple of quick jumps here where I'm moving definitely faster than Amy should have been. And that's going to be sort of a key tenant to the duration of this run. Um, we're going to be going through the levels from Sonic 06, recreating SRP2 in Sonic story order. And we're going to come and do the delightful max speed section now. And this does genuinely work the same way in SRP2 that it does in 06. I am forced to be running forwards. And I'll be able to prove it at some point if I really comically screw one of these up uh, and have to double back on myself. But this first one... We, we wouldn't want that, no, but, but it would be quite funny. It would funny. be pretty funny. Um, but this first one is very straightforward. Wave Ocean is a nice, simple introductory level to get us to get us in the mood and settled in. There's not really many ways that we can like take damage or lose lives. And that immediately goes out the window because every level from this point on is an absolute nightmare. So with, oh, with Dusty Desert, True to the original, uh, all the sand is horrible lava. It damages you when you stand in it. Really unfortunately, it also works like mud and you stick to it. Uh, for a character with absolutely no mobility or acceleration like Amy, <laughs> this is basically a death sentence if I fall in it. So I'm going to be doing my best mm. to avoid that. So one thing I can do to pick up speed, and I'm going to be maintaining it as much as I can here, jumping downhill on slopes works the same way that it does in a classic Sonic game. So I'm going to be doing that quite a lot. As much as possible, in fact, because it's just nice to be able to run fast. Some levels lend to it a little bit more than others. Um, there is a nice little slope jump we can do here if I climb it right. I can't quite go all the way across this gap, but it means I might just be in time for this cycle. Oh, I cannot believe Ooh. I made that. 
<laughs> oh, I should not have gone for that. Smooth. But although I said that Amy can't roll or spin dash, she can be forced into a rolling state um, by boosters. This is super important because when this mod was first designed, uh, it's first designed, sorry, uh, Amy didn't exist as a character. And this was only recently ish ported to SRB2. Um, and it's nice that it was updated and tweaked in such a way that it supports characters that can't roll because not every level mod is compatible with every character. But with the, the horrible outdoor section of Dusty Desert done, we now need to go to the little temple in the middle. It's got the Billiards minigame that nobody likes. It's, <laughs> I suppose, slightly more tolerable here because there aren't very many of them. Um, although I've said that this level is, is pretty hard, it is short at least. There is a glorious hole on one we can do up here, but I'm going to take it a little bit slowly because if you miss, you have to run all the way around. Um, I mean, this event really should have just been Sonic and the Golf Games because that would have been pretty good. Golf find its way to just creep in exactly. to, to a lot of these speedruns. So Sonic 06 did have boss fights. Uh, so does this mod, uh, where we would have the Egg Cerberus. Instead, we have the Egg Squelcher. Um, it's just oh. the Techno Hill boss. However, um, this is easily the easiest boss in all of SRB2. But if you change its arena. Um, or where you start in relation to it, it rapidly becomes an absolute clown fiesta. That's probably the best I've done on that all day. <laughs> Just starting non-center, awful. I would happily take that over Egg Cerberus. True. <laughs> so, that guy sucks. in the Project 06 run yesterday, uh, there was quite a bit of talk about some really interesting movement tech you can do with the snowboard. You'll have seen me do my own bit of movement tech with the snowboard at the beginning of the level by just ignoring it because it's slow. It is genuinely quicker to just run and do slope jumps than it is to mess about using the snowboard, which is a bit of a shame, but it is kind of funny. So I'm going to be going down a lot of slopes. I'm going to be building up and preserving as much momentum as I can. I think I've done quite a few in a row at this point. I'm going to have to time that carefully to go under this laser. This is basically the last of the hill levels. Well, I realise that's no pun intended because it is the snow level. We're going to do a quick leap of faith here. Hey. That was actually pretty good. This is easily the hardest bit of the whole run. Not even joking, in level 3. Because I've got to do a bunch of angled jumps off these platforms. Ooh. Yep. Oh, indeed! <laughs> and Amy does not have the momentum to account for mistakes there. Um, you lose momentum there, you're just resigned to sliding into the pit and there's nothing you can do about it. There are a few other places in the run where we're going to have to deal with angled platforms like that. Fortunately, that's the worst one. And with that, we've done all the half of white acropolis and we can just focus on breaking into Eggman's base and having a nice chill time doing so. There are a couple of bits nice. of combat. This one we can just skip. Uh, I think that was supposed to be a combat section and it just isn't. We've got these nice little red lasers, which because of Amy's jump fight, we can actually skip a few of the platforms here to speed things up slightly. And then moving through here, we've got our first combat sequence. Um, we need to break all the enemies in this room in order to get out. So we're going to do that by picking up this Armageddon shield and taking a hit and killing them all instantaneously. I am very grateful that such a shield decided to be placed in that combat room, because it would be very slow if we had to actually fight it manually. From here, we're going to have to make our way up to the goal ring. It's in that little window you could briefly see there. We're going to have to jump up these slopes. Amy does not have a particularly fun time climbing those. But with that, we're through White Acropolis. That was actually a pretty good White Acropolis. But moving on into Crisis City, uh, we need to be more or less perfect here right off the bat to keep momentum. That was actually pretty good. I now want to go nice. up here. We're going to use Amy's hammer on springs. Oh, I got snagged on the wall. So there is a cycle about 50 seconds into the level that if you make it, great. And if you don't, you lose 20 seconds and there's nothing you can do about it. I may still be able to make it. Um, if not, I do still get to practice some important movement tech, so it's not the end of the world. Um, I don't know how many other characters can really make this cycle. I imagine Sonic probably can. I think I may can, still... Is, is the lava... Sorry, is the lava on the ground just a big pizza? Uh, possibly, yes. There are different types of lava. It kind of looks like it. Some of, some of the lava... Ah, <laughs> oh, I think that might have just missed the cycle now. Some of the lava will ah. instantly kill you. Some of it will not. I'm going to jump and act like I'm getting this. Way. <gasps> hey. And make the second one. And I'm going to be really careful here. So one quirk with SRP2's engine is if a platform is ascending and you jump off of it, you tend to get a huge upward boost. For some reason, I think it's because of the way that those platforms judder up and down as they ascend. 
sometimes you don't get the boost, that you have to just act like you're not getting it, which is odd, but it's a it's a nice little safety amendment you can make. I'm going to hammer this spring, and we're going to make our way into this building. What we need to do in this section is there's a switch we need to press to open a door to get out. Um, I already know where the switch is, luckily, so I'm going to make my way to there. And we're going to get the first instance of the game taking the camera away from us, but still giving us control for some reason. So I'm going to move my way backwards off screen uh, while that switch is going. There's a few places where I'll do that where it's safe. There's one place where it's definitely not safe, and I'll highlight that. We're going to deliberately not hammer this spring because we want to touch the ground quicker. We're going to hammer this one so we bonk the ceiling and land faster. And now I need to do a, a section of very careful jumping across this beam. Nicely done. And we're pretty close to the end at this point. Gonna take a wide path there for safety, hammer that spring. Nice. So we're actually pretty close to where the max speed section would have been um, in the original level. Mercifully, the max speed section for this level is not included, and I'm very grateful. We are, however, gonna get a little bit of a uh, little bit of an Easter egg. Sonic Generations moment as the goal ring runs away from us. Oh. How dare they? What's really interesting about the way the goal ring works there is, uh, like, as Amy, there's no way to touch it as it ascends. But if you're on a character that can tag it on the way up, it still clears the level. Oh. So, like, if Tails flies into it or Mamie does a hammer whirl, for example, um, you can get in there nice and quickly. So, moving on from Crisis City, we get the other lava level. Uh, Flame Core is the longest level in the run, arguably the most difficult as well. Um, I think it probably doesn't have the sync any particular really challenging section. It's just very long and requires a lot of concentration and focus. Um, there's not really a lot you can do in it to beat it up. And there are lots of ways that you can fall off and lose time. So I did a jump around the edge of that platform there because it was going to break underneath me. Did a quick hammer jump there. Didn't make it through that, but that's fine. Um, we're basically on cycles for this section anyway, so it's not the end of the world that I took a hit. Because um, I usually end up having to wait on a platform in a moment. I'm taking the long way around instead of like a brief shortcut with a spring just because of the way the damage is lined up. And now I'm going to have to concentrate for a moment as I go for a tricky jump. Nice. So that bounce gets us up onto this upper route. Uh, this skips a forced combat section and a really slow internal bit of platforming. Um, it, like If I'd missed that jump, it would have genuinely been quicker for me to try it again twice rather than go around the, the bottom route. Um, but that was relatively the most difficult bit done. There's a, there's a tricky section coming up with some angled platforming, but we've got the most stressful parts of Flame Core out of the way. Now, this room is a bit of a puzzle room in that where we actually need to go was directly opposite, but the platform was too high up for us to reach. Um, so we're going to have to make our way around the edge of the room, and we're going to have to do a quote-unquote puzzle to raise some platforms. Um, I don't know the solution. I did this once. It worked. So I just do this every time now. This doesn't actually raise every platform. It raises all of them bar one. But Amy's extra jump height means that I don't need to really worry about it and I can just jump over the gap. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's nice when things work out that way. And now we move on into the inside of Flame Core. So this one's a little bit slower paced, a little bit sedate, and that's going to go out the window right off the bat because there are speed shoes here and I really, really need them. So I'm going to have to carefully platform. I'm going to take this bit a little bit carefully because if I fall off here, it's not great. There we go. So, and then again, these these shield nice. robots, if you hit them, you bounce off them. This is comically bad when you have speed shoes and are moving very fast. <laughs> and I think, yeah, I carried the speed shoes through there with a nice big jump. Fell in the lava, definitely deliberate. Going to grab a safety ring here, didn't lose a cycle, which is very nice. This bit is quite dark. In the original 06 level, you could interact with these purple orbs to turn the lights on. Um, they don't work with Amy's hammer jump, so I'm gonna just not use them. So I am still in control here while that door opens, but it's not safe to just run backwards um, because it's difficult to gauge exactly where I am in relation to that gap. And if I fall in, that's pretty much it. So that's one instance where we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful. What we're going to do here then is we're going to come through one more little roll section and we're now going to do a quick ascent while all this lava rises around us in this room. If we fall off here or fall down, it's very difficult for us to recover. Luckily, uh, even Amy running is enough to stay ahead of it and we just need to do quick little jumps. And just like that, we are at the end of Flame Core, one little drop right to the end and then we move on to possibly one of the worst bosses I've ever seen in a video game. 
That wasn't too bad for Flinkle, though. Not bad. Pretty please. So, it is going to say versus Mephiles. It is very clearly going to be Metal Sonic. Uh, that's because uh, the... Thanks for that. Yeah, well, I've got, a, I've got a little mod option on that enables the cute little 3D models. Um, Mephiles in this is based on Metal Sonic. So, because Metal uh, Mephiles does not have a... Um, 3D model, it just equals to Metal Sonic, because that's whose data he's using. So, the reason this boss is so awful is this particular pinch phase where he bounces around. So, all the boxes and the different shape and size of the arena means it's very difficult to keep track of him, because you constantly lose sight of him. Now, this wouldn't be too bad if you could just listen. Um, there he is, he's taking damage. It wouldn't be too bad if you could just listen, but there are these constant roaring flame jets you might have picked up on as well. Which just make this boss more of a nuisance than anything else. Um, he is probably manipulatable, but to this day, I've not found a good way to just position that I can get him to bounce in a way that's easy and quick to hit. So I'm going to just take refuge behind boxes and hope for the best on this last hit. I think it's an interesting tweak for the boss arena because Metal Sonic actually can get hurt by the fire. It can make him vulnerable, and if he spins and lands in it, um, it can damage him too, which which is an interesting tweak. Uh, he's vulnerable, I need to find him. That was a really smooth Mephiles. Um, it does make him vulnerable, but it's I think it's more of a nuisance than it is something helpful is the problem. So with that done, we're on to our last four levels not including the final boss. Next up is Radical Train, which I think, based on the instrumentation, probably is a direct route to Eggman's base. It's a shorter level than Crisis City and Flame Core. Um, it's a bit more difficult, though. There are a lot of death pits that it's over, and it's a lot harder to build up momentum. Um, there is a little cheeky route change that I'm going to be doing in a moment, um, where what I'm supposed to do here is wind my way around through some cargo containers and do a little bit of platforming and avoid some bad mix. But because of Amy's extra jump height, I can just not bother doing any of that. And take a quick route all the way up. Press this switch. I'm going to just take a quick run up to get in here. Because I don't want to fall down. And I'm going to press this switch. That opens a gate to let me out of this area. And I'm going to skip the backtracking by hammering that spring and launching myself over. So through here is a section of conveyors and pulleys that are hanging over a void. This is not great. Especially as a character that is vulnerable in midair while jumping. Luckily, there aren't too many obstacles. And that is the scary part of Radical Train, nicely done and dusted with. Now, there hasn't really been much train yet in Radical Train. It was pretty prominent in the 06 original. So we're going to address that right as we come around this corner here. We're going to have to board the Radical Train. <laughs> Ooh. Smooth transition. We're going to press this switch. I like that. I, like I am that. still in control here, but I'm deliberately waiting for the cutscene to finish because if you move at the wrong time, you can accidentally go back into the old version and be semi soft locked till you work out what you've done. So we've got another max speed ah. section. This one is a little bit different from Wave Oceans in that for some reason they gave you speed shoes for it. Uh, this makes it quite difficult to control. Um, <laughs> luckily, I know where I'm going and I've practiced the jumps. But well, this is much more difficult than Wave Oceans. Also, because of the speed shoes, we actually need to break here and hold down or we go too fast and get stuck on the ceiling. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to get bounced Ooh. into the air by that, but it, it worked out in my favor. And with that, that's Radical Train done. That was pretty good. Coming up next, we've got Tropical Jungle. This is easily my least favorite level in the whole run. It's just very tricky, despite its short length. It's lots of really obnoxious type platforming. Um, the checkpoints are few and far between. That's something that's fortunately not come up yet. But the checkpoint placement in this mod is quite mean for a run. Um, this is substantially more difficult, in my opinion, as a run than the base SRB2 campaign. And actually substantially more difficult than a lot of um, other mod packs that I've played. Surely, basically due to the length of the levels, um, the complexity of what you're required to do, and how few and far between the checkpoints are. Um, we're not going to get another checkpoint now until after the hard part. And then after that, there are no checkpoints at the end of the level. So we're going to have to do a little bit of careful platforming here. If we fall off here, uh, it's a kill plane, which is brilliant. Um, we're going to have to just be extra careful to be hop across these. We're going to do a little swag strat here and only use this mushroom to bounce all the way up here, just about. We can't touch those spike balls because it will be instant death. If we fall here, it's not the end of the world, but I'm going to avoid it. 
And with that, we're through Tropical Jungle Act 1, and we're going to move on into Act 2. I'm going to try and keep speed by jump bunny hopping, but with the where the morning stars are, there's not really much point from here. So, we need to use the boosters here to bounce over the water, because if you fall in it, you die instantly. Um, the whole Act 2 of this level is very, very precarious. Um, I am going to be aiming to do all the platforming at full speed, because Amy's jump height means you can skip several of them. Um, but it is genuinely very, very tricky. So again, I'm going to bounce directly into that one. I'm going to line up on this one. going to line up on this one, because some of them let's send you straight into spike balls and kill you. I'm deliberately not hammering that, so I get less airtime. And I'm going to jump through here between these badniks, and we've got a combat section to finish. He was in a really, really unfortunate position. So these take two hits each. Okay, I got him. Uh, I really need a ring, thank you. That was terrifying. Yes. <laughs> Combat section done. And we get to move on into Kingdom Valley. Uh, Kingdom Valley, I think, is my favorite level in this pack because it, it seems very faithful to the original and it has a cool bit of speed tech in it that occurs nowhere else and honestly very infrequently in mod packs that I've played in general. So just like the 06 original, we're going to not do the cycling around at the beginning by just dropping off to the end. We're going to hop in here and we're going to kill these little archers. We're going to have to do this in a couple of places. And then we're going to do a little bit of tight platforming before we get to the fun stuff. So I'm not 100% familiar with the base 06 levels, um, but I think this one is pretty uh, faithful to the original source material. Um, this is the level that sticks in my mind best. Missing a cycle there, that's not the end of the world. Just wait for this. We're going to be careful as this platform rises because there are turrets and obviously getting shot in midair means we're going to fall off and probably fall into the pit below. Again, this level's basically over a death pit. Uh, I'm going to carefully wait here for that platform because I'm off cycle. Use the upward momentum to skip up onto here. And this is where the fun stuff really kicks in. So we need to activate a switch here to progress. And the switch is this side, but the other side, tucked away, is a fun little surprise tool that's going to come in really handy. It's a fire mm. shield. Now, this works exactly nice. the way that it does in Sonic 3. It gives you a little movement speed boost. Now, you may remember that if you do frame-perfect jumps, you can preserve momentum. And this is a multiplicative boost, which means we can get very... Ve ooh, 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 okay, never mind. That was close, that was close, <laughs> just as planned. We can get... Mm -hmm. Very, very large amounts of speed with this shield, very quickly, as long as we keep it. Um, there is a particular bit of this level that I'd really like to hang on to it for, so I am going to be a little cautious with it. Um, it also comes in handy for these particular bits of platforming. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it safe and wait for that, because if I die here, it's maybe a minute lost. It's really brutal. Um, again, there are some bad nicks at the top of here, so I'm going to just carefully position around them. going to hop around the shield bad nicks and hop on into the inside of the church. Now the fire shield's pretty good in here because we just gotta run. So we can just use it to build up some speed, jump over some spikes, avoid that badnik, avoid those spikes. Gonna hop across this chandelier. Okay, now the reason I wanted to keep this, uh, bringing this into a max speed section is a good time. Uh, we can use this to build up absolutely massive amounts of speed. Uh, it's not always safe to do so uh, because of the obstacles and the pits. But if we can jump and I can get away with it, then I'm absolutely going to be doing these jumps as often as I can. It's also really good for this section right at the end, where we got to go through these boosters, go upside down, and then go through here. Keeping the fire shield the whole way, magnificent. Couldn't have done it better Lovely. if I'd done it on purpose. <laughs> so with that, we are through into the final level following Sonic Story, Aquatic Base. Uh, Aquatic Base is a challenging level. Um, there's a lot of precision platforming, there's a lot of interesting gimmicks, we've got some water. Um, with the way that this uh, the game sort of checkpoints objectives like switches, we're also going to be taking some intentional deaths to speed things up a little bit. This is only really applicable um, if you've got through the rest of the run pretty clean, because you want to take one death guaranteed, you can optionally take a second, so it's going to be nice to be able to do both. Now I'm going to squeeze under this laser, this first underwater section, I'm going to do without stopping for air. Okay, that's a little bit tricky. I am going to stop for air now, in fact, just in case. That's the, the one downside with Amy's hammer. Come on, bubble. Thank you. Is that it will break wooden boxes. Um, 
So if you if you're like me, I constantly use a hammer jump in midair just so I don't use it when I hit the ground if I'm trying to do rapid jumps. It makes it very easy to accidentally break those wooden boxes. But luckily it's not the end of the world. Gonna avoid that fish. Gonna deactivate a laser grid with this switch. This one doesn't show us a cutscene, uh, luckily. So I'm gonna carry a lot of speed into the water, but I'm gonna deliberately not jump to preserve it because doing so usually throws you into that pillar, which knocks you into the death pit below. So I'm gonna deliberately not hammer that spring because I'll be airborne for far too long if I do that. And we're gonna get the first checkpoint a minute 20 in. That's the sort of level length and difficulty we're gonna be looking at here. So I'm not gonna stop, need to stop for breath on this one. I'm gonna just hammer this spring and up we go. There's a really, really cool little bit of platforming coming up across these platforms over a void. I'm gonna just hop, hop again. And on this one, I'm gonna have to delay my jump until we start to sink towards the void. Now there is a little bit of swag combat tech I can do here if I aim this correctly. Okay, I only got one of them, but whenever I actually hammer the ground, I probably should have mentioned this like several levels ago, but I send out a little shockwave of hearts. They have active hitboxes and I can use those to clear out groups of enemies pretty quickly. So we need to go down these two paths here. Um, I'm going to deliberately take a hit on him. I'm going to ideally then not collect a ring. I'm going to press this. I'm going to jump backwards while I'm going invisible. I'm going to run into the laser. I'm going to reset at the top of the checkpoint and not have to run back up. Um, that one saves a couple of seconds. The skip from this side saves substantially more for reasons that will be apparent by the time I'm nearly at the end of it. But underwater, it is too long to do in one breath. So I would have to make a stop for oxygen. Um, and in addition to that, it's just slower moving underwater in general anyway. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to line up in FPS view on this switch. Oh, OK, hang on. There we go, I got it. And now I'm going to propel myself into the void below. Reset. And just like that, we're going to move on into the finale section. So, I am so glad that they didn't have water in the official release of this game. Absolutely. Because, <laughs> oh my gosh. So this section, uh, I, I'm, I fondly remember this bit of aquatic base as a bit with the silver orbs. Unfortunately, we don't have any of them in the SRV2 release, but they're here in spirit. They're here in my heart. We've got one last little hallway to run down with a bunch of breakable doors. I'm going to be ignoring all the bad nicks. They're just in the way until I get to the very, very end, and we've got a combat section. So there are four egg pawns, I think, several of these Robin Hood enemies. Um, it's very difficult to line these guys up to be able to kill multiple of them cleanly. Um, I'm going to be a little bit careful and make sure I grab rings. And get the last two at the very back. Dug three, pretty good. Now we do have a final boss. Like with the previous two bosses, it's an adaptation of, of a vanilla Sonic Robo Blast 2 boss. It's a really, really awful boss. So you're probably thinking, oh, it's Brock Eggman. He's not so bad. And they're taking away the acid and the, and the laser. That's pretty good, right? Well, it's pretty good now. And then, unfortunately, the room begins to fill with water. This gets very miserable for Amy very quickly because Amy cannot build momentum very effectively. Um, luckily, it does like, you know, the, the fire projectiles will vanish on the floor. The real difficulty comes from the fact that the boss constantly speeds up as you hit him. Um, with every single hit, and I do not because I'm underwater. Um, also, I'm obviously very slowly drowning. That particular move is a death sentence if it hits. Um, I'm gonna have to very carefully... Okay, but, okay, that's, I'm in trouble now. There's literally nothing I can do, unfortunately, to dodge that particular attack. Um, got my ring, so I should be okay. Play nice. With how fast he moves as well now, it's very difficult to actually get hits on him. And there'll be time coming up. That is time. Hey. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna look. I don't wanna jinx it. I think mm -hmm. that might be a PB in a world record. Okay. Which I've been. Do you want to? Well, do you want to hear from our side what the, what the uh, real time looked like? Absolutely. That was a twenty-seven oh four. I am ninety percent. That is a world record. Ninety percent. That is world record. We'll take that. We will. Take I'll take that. it. I've I've been I've been trying to ease that PB out. I think for the last two to three days, and it's nice that it's finally there. 
and uh, possibly the best moment I could possibly have it. Nice, exactly. Um, I'd love to see it. There you go, the very first 90% P <laughs> PB slash world record <laughs> on GDQ, I'm sure. We love it, we love it. 90%. It's close enough. We do. It's close enough. Um, well, RPG, once again, a very stellar job with some Sonic Roboblast 2 action. If people are interested in this, where can they find this wonderful creation? So you can find Default SRB2 at srb2.org. You can find this mod on their forums, uh, which is srp.org forward slash forums. There's a full modded releases section where this Angel Island tour um, and loads of other wonderful individual levels and level packs get released. Uh, it's also where all the fun custom characters are. So the Shadow Silver, Mamie, uh, fan characters, OCs, a fly, the Half-Life 2 scientist, a microwave, many more. None of those have I made <laughs> up. I'm not joking. The microwave is amazing. Let's go. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> awesome. And then if folks want to see more of it, you. Where can they find what you get up? So, folks can find me and my particular brand of tomfoolery at twitch.tv forward slash RPG underscore hidden wizard, where uh, I tend to, I like learning runs and doing a couple and then throwing them away, never to be ran ever again. Um, that's just the way it be. <laughs> nice. So, if that sounds like a good time, then that's where you can find me. Same the second plug, you can also find me at twitch.tv forward slash RPG underscore humble wizard, where Usually weekday mornings, but this is going to be in flux because I'm starting a new job soon. Um, I stream development of a tactics RPG that I've been working on for a couple of years now. Do I have time Intriguing. for a couple of well, shout-outs? Oh, yeah. Go right, ahead. I've got a few. I'll try and rattle them off as quickly and as efficiently as I can. Number one <laughs> shout-out for today, and I know she's not watching, but I'd like to give a shout-out to my lovely mother because it is her 60th birthday today. Oh. You love to see it. I'd like to give a shout out to Lacus because they are so important to me that they get a shout out at both runs. Um, I'd like to shout out oh. Focus because although Focus isn't here to commentate for this run, I do very much appreciate that his schedule was really busy and he still took the time out to, uh, you know, learn the commentary guide, watch the run, and it was only a last minute decision really that made him unable to make it. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to the Club 601 Mandem, uh, to the GTQ staff for putting on this wonderful event, and to Amber and Hibby especially for having me and my particular brand of nuisance on not once but twice to this lovely event. Don't say Club 601 Mandem ever again. I mean, thank you, RPG, for that run. <laughs> You're very welcome. Everybody, that was that was a phenomenal watch. And if you are in, just getting into the Sonic Robo Blast 2 action, we're going to be having some more after this break. We are going to be going over and doing some karting in Sonic Robo Blast 2. What is that going to look like? Shop of Claws is going to take us through that. But before that, we're going to have a quick little break. Um, use this as a good opportunity, if you haven't recently, uh, to get up and have a little stretch. Um, make sure that you're staying well nourished and hydrated. And yeah, we will see you very, very soon for some more Sonic Robo Blast 2 action. <laughs> 